friends welcome back to the channel i'm so grateful that you are back and if you are new around here hello my name is Libier. i am a tv lifestyle expert blogger and author and it is my joy to create content to inspire you to take care of yourself a little bit each day i wanted to share with you a long wearing date night wedding wedding guest maybe you're going to a really nice brunch and you want your photos to look really nice and you want your makeup to look really natural but stay a little longer and to be good for photos or for video this is the video for you. We have already put the mascara in the armpit area, warming that up so that it is ready to go when we need to use it. That is the first thing that I do before starting my makeup. Then I prep the lips and make sure that I exfoliate them. This is Fenty Beauty and this is a little lip exfoliant. It feels so nourishing and so nice to glide this on the lips and get that dead skin off. This Lanolips Strawberry 101 ointment also has alpha hydroxy acids that slew off dead skin cells. So it's really nice to first exfoliate with a physical exfoliant, but then this is packed with chemical exfoliant. It gives you a really hydrated lip so that you can apply whatever you want at the end of your makeup and it will go on really nicely. Now we're going to start prepping the skin with this tinted SPF from Chower 28. Love it so much. Got a really nice evening the skin power. And for summertime, you kind of want that feeling of like, it's just your skin, right? Even if it's a special occasion, you can definitely go with a more minimal approach to your canvas because it gives the skin a really nice evened out state. And then we'll assess what we need. I feel like the trouble sometimes with us in putting makeup on is e either we use the wrong finish and we're kind of like, Ugh, we don't like that. Or we go in with too much and it just sits on the skin. Doing this first kind of gives you a, an idea of where you need to conceal. Because we're going to move on to conceal. This stick from Merit you can use as a foundation stick or you can use or you can use as an entire foundation. And for now, I'm just going to use it as a concealer. I'm going to start doing little motions like this to get the product to marry the skin. That already is giving such a really nice feel. I did a self tan and I could totally use a deeper color than this. This is my very pale skin concealer, but I don't have another concealer with me right now. I'm going to show you what we're going to do to warm up the face. I'm going to go in with Ray from Glossier. already kind of feels like a lot bronzy and nice the base is nice and done i feel like that ray from glossier is such a good color for when i have a self tan or a faux tan that's really nice let's do some blush i'm, I'm gonna use this blush from merit beauty it's called stockholm and it is the most gorgeous pinky tone ever oh it's just gorgeous i love this color so much taking a little brush and just making sure that all of that is nice and married we're gonna highlight with this merit beauty highlighting stick now i'm gonna set under the eyes and just in the center of the face with the say setting powder and before I do that, I just make sure that all of those products, the creams, haven't settled into the little lines uh, on my eyelid and under here. Before I set, I just make sure to either go with my finger and get that nice and squared away because you just want to make sure that you're laying down the powder with a blank canvas. I love this. It's so good. Using the Cosas bronzer. This is such a beautiful bronzer. It's so nice to apply. Now we're going to work on the eyebrows. We're going to brush them up. 
brush, 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 up, 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 and then you go down. <laughs> gonna apply a little gel from Merit Beauty. This one kind of gets a gotta do the excess product I feel like from the little brush because sometimes it gets to be a lot and I don't have a lot of eyebrows so I need to be careful with that. On top of the Merit blush I'm gonna pop this on because we are going on camera and if this is for special event you kind of want to give yourself the longevity rule which is cream and then powder. So if you do that you will ensure that that cream ain't going nowhere <laughs> and that looks really pretty i love hourglass all their powders are so good we're gonna take this rowan palette it's called gold lust and i'm gonna use this i'm gonna take the color bonbon this is a cream shadow which probably would work Wow, that blends out really nicely with the brush. I just want to give depth to the eyeball. Then I'm dipping back into that same shade and bringing it down on the lash line. My house has these birdies that sing on top of the fireplace and give me serenades every morning. Oh my gosh, I feel so blessed to have that as a feature of my house. Like, I literally, my heart bursts with joy every time I hear the little birdie singing. Today I kind of want to play with this copper. The corner of the eye. I love this palette. So these three are cream so you can grab them either with your finger or with a brush. I clean my finger off completely and I'm going to take the lightest shade and bring that just to the very top. And then a little bit in the inner corner. I'm going to take the brush that I used with the Say powder and just kind of go over the top of the brow bone just like this tonight to kind of open up the eye a little bit again. Then we're going to take Draw Me from Tower 28 and tight line the waterline. And what I'm doing is just taking the pencil very, very, very gently and laying it down like this and just going back and forth on the waterline but if you need to you can pick it up like this and draw it on like that but i'm used to closing my eye gently and doing that so you can do either then i like to grab that and just sort of extend a tiny little wing for the eye to feel a little elongated for this particular eyeliner i'm gonna use i'm gonna use the darkest shade in the rowan palette and grab it with a tiny little brush like this and go over it so that it does not budge. You can take your nail and create the wing however short or long you want. I like mine, just little shorty pies. We're gonna, we're gonna give the lashes a nice big curl. One, two, three, and then come up. One, two, three, and come up. Let's do our mascara. We're going to use the Tower 28. This is the Make Waves Mascara in the color Jet. And I'm going to be really careful because this wand has poked me. <laughs> and I'm just going to take it easy. And I'm not going to go as much onto the base, but I'm just going to work on those tips of the eyelash first. And then I kindly and gently as to not poke myself in the eyeball. <laughs> Comment below and let me know how many times you poke yourself in the eyeball per week. Me, if I'm going fast, probably twice a week. <laughs> I'm a twice a weeker. But... I'm learning to take life a little slower. I'm learning the benefits of really being present, really slowing down, breathing deeply, and taking time to slow down. We don't have to be hurried. If we want to, we can live at a pace that works for us. 
but you have to be a little more strategic and a little more intentional if you don't want to rush because you've got to plan a little more, which I like to do and I'm learning how to be better at that. You've got to be proactive, which is not being reactive to your circumstances, but be proactive in, okay, if this is what I have to do to go to school tomorrow or to work tomorrow, these are all the things that I need to do at night in order for my morning self to be at her best. So it's just slowing down and kind of taking inventory. This habit that I'm about to tell you about it has been transformative in my life. I have learned if I slow down on a daily basis and I just think about at night what went well. I have a little journal now on my bedside and before I go to bed I pray and I because of Dr. Amen, a man that is incredible and has so many different podcasts and books and is so knowledgeable about the brain, he said, your brain needs to have a little nudge to notice the good things. So he recommends praying and asking yourself at night what went well today and for you to really think about the things that you were good at the things that you loved the things that you were grateful for the victories even the very small ones sometimes even the smallest ones make the biggest impact because we think you know that to be a good amazing person you have to create these big audacious things or you have to be this big hot shot to finally be enough or fit in or whatever dr amen says if you focus on all the good things that you have done or that have happened to you i'm not going to put my lips to god right now then your brain will notice that th tomorrow and then you know and then he says in the morning the first thought he wants to think is today is going to be a great day today is going to be a great day and i've been doing that i've been doing at night meditation of just what went well in my day celebrating myself and celebrating god and what he did through me and what he did for me and all the things i'm grateful for and it really has set a different tone for my well-being i'm gonna go in with this bite beauty <laughs> Slowing down and taking inventory of my life daily, weekly, monthly, yearly would be so impactful. But I sit down and I kid you not, it's not like it's not like this huge thing, but I sit down and I ask myself, like, what went well this week? What can I celebrate this week? What went bad? How can I change that next week? Is there anything I can do in my own strength? to make changes for these things that didn't go well. I like to do a quarterly review. I ask myself the same questions that I ask myself on a weekly basis quarterly so that I can grow from what I'm doing. That is what I'm learning, friends. It has been super impactful in my life to slow down and to not be prey to the hurried and hustle mentality, but to really just slow down and enjoy my ordinary, regular life with God, with my family, with the people that God has surrounded me with, and just with the knowledge that we are enough. In Jesus, you and I are enough. We don't have to strive. We don't have to impress anybody. We don't have to measure up. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior of your heart, He gives you a Holy Spirit inside of you that is your counselor forever, that will be the the the, the thing that you've always craved and wanted in other things and other people and um, this feeling of belonging that you have wanted that i had wanted um, can be solved in christ and my hope with my channel is that i would encourage you not just in your faith but in your faith that you on this earth were put here for a reason that you do have a purpose but you don't have to strive or feel like you have to measure up for that purpose. Does that make sense? I hope that that makes you feel freedom today, this week, and that it sets you up for incredible success in your life. Maybe this week journal, what does success look like in your life? What What is success and what do you want it to be? 
how do you want success to, to be in your life and do you need to reframe what that looks like for you and for the rest of your future um, i hope that you enjoyed this video i loved getting ready with you today my hope is in jesus and my hope is that you would find your hope in him as well i love you so much i will see you in the next video god willing